Radio Mace Tracks FM 1122 AM right here on Tracks Momentum. Kong Yu with you on the health interview of the day in conjunction uh, this morning with uh, the World Primary Immunodeficiency Week, which uh, happened, uh, which is happening, I guess, uh, 22nd to 29th. Uh, one more day to go tomorrow is the official last day of it, but always uh, better on the later side than never. <laughs> True. And joining me in discussion, uh, the voice that you heard of the gentleman there is uh, Dr. Amir Hamza Abdul Latif, who is a consultant, pediatrician and clinical immunologist and allergist uh, from Pantai Hospital Kuala Lumpur, as well as the president of the Malaysian Society of Allergy and Immunology. So welcome, doctor. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thanks for having me uh, here, uh, Kong Yu. Mm-hmm. It's always a pleasure talking about things that I'm passionate about, okay. obviously. I love Lovely. Now, today we're talking about uh, basically a primary immunodeficiencies yeah, and creating more awareness of it in conjunction with the World Primary Immunodeficiency Week, a global campaign aiming to raise awareness and improve diagnosis and treatment of primary immunodeficiencies, otherwise uh, acronymized as PIDs. Yeah? I think what, uh, what we should start off with is, of course, a definition uh, for uh, the people like me who are not uh, medical <laughs> experts, as well as maybe some of our listeners as well. What are uh, primary immunodeficiencies? Yes, uh, mm. thanks. Primary immunodeficiencies are essentially um, a group of chronic disorders that, um, in fact, um, affect the immune system. Mm-hmm. Okay, and either the parts of the immune system is missing or it's not functioning properly. Now, we all know about immunodeficiency from, say, HIV, AIDS, Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome, AIDS. So, Mm. immunodeficiency is there. Now, the difference between that and primary, it means primary is spontaneous. So, there's genetic mutations that's caused some of the genes to cause part of the immune system to be missing or not functioning properly, Mm -hmm. as opposed to HIV, which causes AIDS, which is secondary. So, you can have secondary immunodeficiencies due to uh, HIV infection, due to leukemia, other cancers, and even medication and drugs. Right. So, it's something that the body develops naturally. Yes, that's right. The, the immune system develops and then uh, it will have, it's a very complex system, by the way, and there are many, many parts. So if one part is missing, then you get, and that's missing because it's congenital or genetic or hereditary in uh, nature. So it's a spontaneous thing. So it's not due to anything else, but mainly genetic uh, conditions, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but not all, uh, what shall we say, genes are found uh, already. But there are more than um, 200 types of uh, PID. Right. Right. Yeah, and just for the listeners, I, I know you have PID as pelvic inflammatory disease, prolapse, intervertebral disease, but today we're just talking about primary immunodeficiency. Okay, good, good, definitely good to recap that, right? And uh, speaking of that, I'm speaking to Dr. Amir Hamza Abdul Latif, who is a consultant pediatrician uh, at Pantai Hospital Kuala Lumpur, right? So if you do have a question for uh, Dr. Amir on uh, today's topic, well, feel free to call uh, anytime at our tracks numbers. You know them, but just uh, in case you are new to the channel, well, it's zero three two two eight two five four nine one, as well as zero three two two eight two four seven four six, and we will pick out a question and uh, hopefully uh, we'll discuss it on air. In the meantime, back to PIDs. PIDs. Why do they occur? Do we know, or is it? A, a, yeah, because of a whole bunch of different factors interacting with each other. Yeah. Mm. Now, PID is not something new. I mean, it's uh, classified as emerging in some places. Not emerging because it's new, but emerging because it's um, getting um, there's more awareness, so it's being diagnosed more and more as we go along. Probably historically, we, it probably would have been discovered and described even back in the uh, uh, the early ni- uh, 20th century. Um, but the awareness uh, has been very slow, not just in Malaysia, but worldwide, and hence why the World PID Week, mm. uh, so that there's increased awareness amongst the public, the healthcare professionals, and most importantly, amongst the, uh, um, the policy makers. Right. right. So, um, this um, primary immunodeficiency or PID, um, because of its condition, mm. um, there is missing or the immune system is not functioning properly. So you can have increased infections, obviously. Mm. That's the first mm. thing, because that's what our immune system does. Mm. It fights off infections. So you just imagine if there's nothing there in the, your immune system that can fight off 
let's say your antibodies are missing, so you cannot fight off bacteria. So you're going to have recurrent infections. Now, that's one of the things that should spur us on. I'd like to come up with this acronym that we have been using for a while now okay. called SPUR. S-P-U-R. S-P-U-R. Yeah. Mm. S meaning severe infection. If you have a severe infection that does not go away and needs, say, intravenous uh, antibiotics, meaning hospitalization, right. think whether this is PID. Mm. P, persistent. That means you've just been taking antibiotics mm. day after day and, let's say, uh, for two months period and it's, you're not shaking it off. Then is it PID? Mm-hmm. Unusual, you, unusual, because unusual organisms cause all these uh, infections. Right. All right. And uh, R. Now, R is recurrent. I've already mentioned that. Mm. Also, R means it runs in the family. Ah. So, if you have a family history of patients or siblings or young ones who die at a very early age, mm. uh, less than one year old, and you've got to be thinking, now this, this family has PID. So if it has PID, then we say that, right, we have to think about whether it runs in the family. But obviously, it doesn't run in everyone. Mm-hmm. It's only about 30% history that you get that's a family history. Okay. And even then, that's because the, uh, the rest are spontaneous. So that patient, that baby, that child, or even an adult, really, could be the first one in the family having it. Mm -hmm. And there's no one else having these similar problems. Okay, but if I'm hearing you correctly, doctor, so in the case of genetics or inherited genes um, uh, or inherited issues that does cause primary uh, immunodeficiency, it is a 30% uh, chance that the offspring of one of the parents, both of the parents? Yes, there's a, there'll be a okay. higher higher chance. Okay. Yeah, and, and probably even more than that, depending on the type of... Uh, hereditary that mm. the the uh, family carries okay mm-hmm. so um that 30 percent means that if you look at 100 patients whom there is already a confirmed pid only 30 percent was there ever a family history mm-hmm. that's what it really means mm-hmm. so but the chances obviously once you know that you have detected a family then obviously it's going to be very much higher than that right right okay and if uh, genetic studies has boomed in the last 20 years and hence the uh, functional or the genetic analysis means that we can now be more definite about diagnosing PID. Mm, mm. I am talking to Dr. Amir Hamza about primary immunodeficiencies. Yeah, uh, Just a little bit before we go for our break, we talk about the symptoms of it manifesting usually in case, uh, infections, for example, uh, anything to do with a weakened or uh, compromised immune system. And so by extension of that, so some of these uh, infections and diseases it can be severe and also life threatening yes definitely mm. and um whilst we are on it and just a quick note now okay. there is a condition a, a, a type of the pid called severe combined immunodeficiency or scid or we call it skid mm-hmm. now just imagine here if you have uh, let's say four big compartments causing an, uh, the immune system to be intact here is a situation where we talk about more than 90% of the uh, compartments. So you can imagine how severe would that be. Now, these are basically children after the age of three months because the first three months, babies are protected by the mother's antibodies coming through the uh, placenta. Right. Right. So once after three months, they get very severe infection, they get pneumonia, they get very bad diarrhea, and they can actually, uh, well, unfortunately, uh, cause demise even mm. before their first birthday if they are not treated. I would like to emphasize here, SCID is considered worldwide a pediatric emergency. Emergency. So we have to diagnose and treat accordingly very fast. And the treatment for SCID is a stem cell transplantation. So we have to go all the way and get this transplantation because data has shown that it can be curable if we diagnose and transplant them uh, as early as possible. Mm -hmm. So that's something new that's ongoing. We have to uh, get and treat this as a pediatric emergency, 
try to get and see whether we can implement a newborn screening for PID. That's what's happening worldwide as well, and that's what the World Primary Immunodeficiency is also advocating. I see. Okay, well, a great sort of a small little wrap-up for the first segment uh, of today's health interview. I'm speaking to Dr. Amir Hamza Abdul Latif, consultant pediatrician as well as clinical immunologist and allergist at Pantai Hospital Kuala Lumpur on uh, the subject of PIDs or primary immunodeficiencies as well as uh, in conjunction with that, the awareness week that is currently ongoing. Yeah, so much more with uh, Dr. Amir after this one by uh, Guy Sebastian. Keep it locked tight right here on Attracts Momentum. Um. Back on Radio Malaysia, Tracks FM's Tracks Momentum. Kong Yu with you, bringing you the health interview of the day. Speaking to a very uh, articulate and a knowledgeable expert today, Dr. Amir Hamza, who is uh, the president of the Malaysian Society of Allergy and Immunology, right? Uh, excellent to have you here. Thank you. And we've been talking about essentially the primary immunodeficiencies uh, in conjunction with uh, the need for better primary immunodeficiencies awareness in Malaysia and hence the World Primary Immunodeficiency Week, which uh, runs from April 22nd to 29th. And uh, earlier on, you were uh, telling us a bit about primary immunodeficiencies in general. Uh, perhaps maybe I, I would like to just uh, recap a little bit on that, especially for the listeners who are just joining us right now. Doctor, uh, in a nutshell, all right, introduce to us this, this uh, topic. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm. uh, once again, primary immunodeficiencies or PID is essentially a group of chronic disorders, not rare, uh, that uh, is affected uh, or affecting the immune system mm. or the immune system is not functioning properly. Hence, we can get obviously straight away. We could think about recurrent infections, severe persistent infections uh, as the, the cardinal symptom and signs of right. PID. Okay, well, well summarized that. And uh, just uh, more details, doctor. So this onset of it, yeah, you said uh, it could be spontaneous. Uh, it could be, it could also uh, manifest itself in terms of the symptoms uh, when an infant is born after a few months. Yeah, uh, Does that mean that at any point in age, at any point, point in time uh, the person may actually develop that uh, it could just happen anytime even in, into adulthood doctor yes um, okay. and I think uh, that's something that we must really stress and the fact that we do need um, physicians as well who are going to be specializing uh, into PID during adulthood I see because if you look at uh, some of the data worldwide it's uh, and take uh, USA and it's not just because uh, President uh, is here. <laughs> still here. <laughs> he's still here. Yes. That's right. Maybe he's listening. In a couple uh, hours yeah, more. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's obviously that uh, in in uh, USA, mm -hmm. the up to sixty percent of PID is actually diagnosed during adulthood, and um, it's not just as if that it occurs during that time, but mm. maybe it was not also picked up during mm. childhood, mm. and it has always been there, but it was not so severe and not so dramatic children seems to be growing well still because that's one of the other cardinal things that we look out okay. a child is not growing well mm. but because the uh, uh, and especially what we call the antibody deficiency now i mentioned about skid as being the one of the severe and but taking uh, another prototypic model okay. shall we say right. uh, the antibody deficiency and the um, in all that nearly 250 types, antibody deficiencies probably make up about 60% of patients with PID. And uh, antibody deficiencies means exactly that. Your body is lacking the antibody right from actually birth because it's a genetic defect. There are cases where we cannot find the genes, but that doesn't mean that it's not there. It's just that we have not discovered it yet, probably at this point. I see. So we say that if you don't have antibody deficiencies, how are you going to fight off the infection? So you get pneumonia, hmm. two pneumonias a year. Now, that's worrying already. You hmm. must suddenly think, is this PID? Right. So sometimes you get one pneumonia a year, nobody thinks about it and say, ah, that's fine. Or you get two or three ear infections, mm. nobody thinks about it, and they grow on. Mm. And then one fine day, they get really bad pneumonia and what a condition called bronchiectasis. That means a chronic inflammatory uh, lung disease. Basically, it's an organ failure, really. That means mm. the lungs begin to fail. Mm. And this, if it had been picked up much earlier, would have um, you know, caused the patient to lead 
a better life. Mm-hmm. So sometimes this is what's happening, and unless we think PID, and that's what I, I like to say, to diagnose PID is to think PID. If you don't think of PID, okay. you're not going to be thinking about and uh, testing for PID and diagnosing it. What more treating it? Okay. So it can happen in adulthood in that sort of scenario. Now, speaking of a diagnosis, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm listening to this right now. I'm trying to understand it uh, more. Yes. Is it a spectrum, doctor? That's right. It's it a is sp- a spectrum. You could have mild, uh, in my terms, <laughs> you mm-hmm. could have mild PID or you could have severe PID. That's right. Yeah. Okay. You can put it that uh, well. Um, Quite, quite simplistic, yeah. uh, clearly, but mm. uh, I think um, we also have to understand that every PID is going to be serious. Mm. Let's put the word serious there. Mm. And yes, it can be mild. And sometimes uh, patients do not know that they're walking with the PID. Right, as in like yeah. they're sickly throughout their lives, mm. uh, prone to infections. Yes. Uh, those are certain signs and symptoms. That's right. Right, yep. and so where, where, where you're coming from is that you like to have the facilities, the training to be able to detect it from birth or as early as possible. That's right, yes. Right, okay. Yes. Well, interesting um, uh, topic I think we're talking about today. We need greater awareness. Uh, any uh, other angles to the diagnosis that okay. you'd like to highlight? Doctor? Yes, the, yeah. the diagnosis uh, mm. will uh, depend on the type of uh, condition or PID. Now, just let's go back to that uh, um, antibody deficiency mm-hmm. and uh, a typical example would be X-linked A gamma globulinemia. Okay. okay even I am hard struggling to pronounce it, but it's XLA. <laughs> right. Or X-L-A. simply called Bruton's disease after the pediatrician who discovered and described it way back in 1952. Mm-hmm. All right. So, it's basically a simple case of, yes, you suspect it very strongly. Now we do simple blood tests. So mm-hmm. it's simple blood tests. And the blood test that we need to do that's most important would be your immunoglobulin levels or your antibody levels. Now, we have to look at, obviously, the age of the patient. Now, they will go a certain range, but they're going to be extremely low, very low, almost zero. They don't have immunoglobulins. Because why? During the development of the um, white cells that produces the antibodies, they, because of the lack of the gene producing a specific enzyme that develops the lymphocytes from an immature to a mature one, and hence after that, causing uh, or producing antibodies, is just not there. Mm-hmm. So there's a stop. Mm-hmm. So it's just like a factory. You produce a car, and then there's no engine. How are you going to run the car? Okay, so there's nothing there, so there's no antibodies. So the lymphocytes or the white cells would be zero or negligible. So the simple blood test that one can do first. Mm -hmm. And the more definitive, obviously, is the molecular genetic studies. And uh, yes, uh, we are beginning to um, uh, sort of uh, develop that here in Malaysia as well. But many other countries uh, around us in Asia are probably more advanced in us. And so that's why we need to increase, yes, the diagnostic, the screening, okay. and also availability of treatment, meaning that transplant, the stem cell transplantation, mm-hmm. be it a bone marrow transplant or umbilical cord transplant, because these are potentially curative. So, so, so those are the uh, treatment the, options for, for skid. For skid. Yeah, and they right. will probably need also what we call immunoglobulin te- replacement therapy, which I'm coming to. Okay. For, for those who do not have the an- antibodies, so we need to give them replacement therapy lifelong. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, they are just going to get really bad, terrible infections mm-hmm. and organ damage and even mortality. Right. So we, we need to improve on their quality of life. Right from the beginning. Okay. You know, not only just thinking about it, but also having the experts, mm-hmm. the expertise. Mm-hmm. So we have to build a critical mass. Okay. In, in a nutshell, doctor, can you summarize with us the available treatments uh, of uh, PID? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's interesting because uh, the way we are here now, we are probably still in the 80s as far as comparing to other diseases. And I think that's where the awareness needs to come that we need the, uh, the bone marrow transplant to be done for skid because it's a pediatric emergency, no doubt about that. 
Uh, I, I know the bone marrow transplant. Uh, if you look at the uh, the bone marrow transplant registries, it's mainly done for acute leukemia, lymphoma. Mm. Yeah. So, but we will have to say that skin or primary immunodeficiency is also important, and we have also the immunoglobulin replacement therapy, which should be free for everyone. Mm-hmm. And, uh, those are the, the key methods, yeah? Yep. I'm speaking to Dr. Amir Hamza Abdul Latif, uh, consultant, pediatrician, and clinical immun- immunologist, excuse me, allergist as well, Pantai Hospital Kuala Lumpur on uh, PIDs, primary immunodeficiencies, understanding it in much more detail. And coming up, we'll be speaking to a mother uh, yes. of uh, a patient uh, diagnosed with uh, PID yes. and I uh, will be speaking to her and find out her first hand experience uh, on the subject All right? keep it locked tight right here on Radio Malaysia Tracks FM good morning Radio Malaysia Tracks FM back on Tracks Momentum's health interview of the day with me Kong Yu today is speaking about uh, PID which is primary immunodeficiencies yeah? uh, I've been talking to uh, Dr. Amir Hamza who is the president of the Malaysian Society of Allergy and immunology, yeah. Uh, we we're talking about uh, treatment methods, yes. and and one of the 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 examples of that that you gave us uh, was on the um, immunoglobin. I believe. Immunoglobulin, yes. Okay, just uh, maybe it's just better recap then. And uh, we are also having on the line uh, a mother of a patient of yours. We'll yes. talk a little bit more about her case uh, for her child in uh, just a minute's time. Yes. Uh, Tell us about this. I mean, when does it occur? When is it necessita- necessitated, doctor? Yeah. Yep. The, the minute you, you have the diagnosis, mm-hmm. then the child needs to go on this immunoglobulin replacement therapy every three to four weeks. Mm-hmm. And this is a lifelong process because the body just cannot produce any antibodies. Mm-hmm. So that's why we need to uh, ensure that the diagnosis is uh, made very quickly. And that's one of the problems, not just in Malaysia, but worldwide. Uh, there's delayed diagnosis and sometimes that average just say for an antibody deficiency is five years, four or five years is not too unusual. Right. And um, the, the more there's the delay, the more damage it occurs to, let's say, the lungs. Mm-hmm. And that's what we need to um, uh, prevent, obviously. Okay. Yeah. So we're talking about, we're talking to Karen right now who joins us on the via phone. Yeah. Karen, are you there? Hi. Hi, good morning. Hi, you. Hi. Hi, Dr. Amir. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and to talk about uh, the uh, case with your son, Caleb. Uh, maybe between uh, uh, Karen and, and Dr. Amir, tell us a little bit more about Caleb's condition. Yeah, uh, I, I think in a nutshell, I've got one really Karen to uh, talk about okay. it. And uh, he has the antibody deficiency uh, or the XLA that I mentioned from before, or Bruton's disease. But I'll, I'll let Karen uh, tell her own experience how... Uh, you know, this problem of delayed in diagnosis and also the awareness and hence under diagnosis even up to 70, 90% worldwide of PID or primary immunodeficiencies. All right. Karen, yeah. Karen. All right. Okay, so um, my son, um, his name is Caleb. He's 10 this year. He was actually diagnosed uh, with PID when he was five. Um, well, of course, it was a very long and a painful journey before we actually discovered uh, what was wrong with him because uh, when he turned three, he was uh, constantly ill mm-hmm. and had numerous infections, you know, from the lungs to the ear. And the most common was actually um, lung infections. Uh, I must say that he had a pretty tough childhood because uh, he was uh, constantly in and out of hospital. You know, we have actually lost count of the hospital visits and stays. Mm-hmm. Furthermore, because of this, he had to miss school often. Right. So the first three years, when he was at the kindergarten, he actually missed out a lot. And because of that, you know, he was, uh, uh, you know, not really catching up, you know, um, as fast as his other friends. I see. And, uh, yeah, and the physicians actually, you know, back then just treated his infections. But the illness, you know, kept coming back or recurred many times. And there was one time where his uh, pneumonia or his lung infection was so bad that mm-hmm. he wasn't responding very well to the uh, antibiotics mm-hmm. he was so vulnerable that at that time he had to be treated at the uh, intensive care unit right. um, and uh, you know the physicians were very worried that his lungs may not be able to take it and did all they could to avoid further damage to his lungs mm-hmm. again you know they just treated his infections and not the underlying cause well our ordeal finally ended during a family holiday to Melbourne five years ago where he was admitted to the Royal Children's Hospital in Melbourne for another recurrence of uh, pneumonia. Okay. And it was there that the doctor suspected his condition and they say, hey, something is really wrong with this kid. Mm. Uh, when we gave them a chronology of, his, uh, of the history of his infection, 
So to cut the further, um, the whole story short, further tests were carried out in Melbourne and Singapore, which confirmed that he has PID. And that also explained why, unlike other children, his body didn't have the ability to fight infections. So as soon as the diagnosis was uh, established, okay. he was immediately treated, um, you know, with immunoglobulin treatment therapy, like what Dr. Amir mentioned. And subsequently, you know, up till today, you know, to manage his condition, and he has been well since then. Yeah. All right, that's a very uh, interesting uh, uh, case you're sharing with us with your son, Caleb. Uh, just uh, one or two clarification points, Karen. Uh, you were saying that he was essentially a sickly child, uh, prone to getting sick. And uh, how many bouts of uh, pneumonia uh, did it take for the uh, case to finally, in a, in a way, reach its peak uh, in, in Australia? Well, I probably between six to eight. Wow. Yeah. And all by the Within time? Within a span of three years. Three years. Yes. Okay. That is very bad. So it's like almost like every year, you know, mm-hmm. he would have recurrent of uh, pneumonia, mm-hmm. lung infection. Lung mm-hmm. infection, yeah. And in addition to that ear infection, you know, one of his ears is actually perforated. So, you know, it was actually quite bad. I mm-hmm. see. And, and yeah. what you're saying, Dr. Amir, is that this can be picked up. Yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. If the uh, all the warning signs are there, mm-hmm. as already mentioned, if you get uh, two pneumonias in a year, right. you must be thinking PID until proven otherwise. And a simple test that will do it. There's nothing uh, really, you know, uh, so fantastic about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, simple, and it's available. Yeah, as yeah. A simple, yeah. which is which is already available. It's already available for right. quite quite a long time. Mm-hmm. That's why I mentioned from before to think PID or to test or diagnose you have mm-hmm. to think PID if you're not thinking about it you're just never going to test for it right and and Karen this was a, yes. something that was never highlighted to you and you were not aware of it until uh, the the doctors in Australia yeah not at all I, I see. even I, I don't even know what is PID you know mm-hmm. not at all yeah mm-hmm. so it, it came you know we were really really shocked and surprised that you know our son has got this con- uh, condition mm. so it was and, and to think that he had to go through, you know, that, that few years of, you know, <laughs> the hospital visits and stays, you know, and, and we didn't even know that he had this condition. And, and I think from, from this um, whole um, experience, you know, if, if the doctors here would, you know, have just done that test, you know, just to find out, you know, um, or, or just to, you know, get his uh, immunity level test done, you know, I think then it would spare him really from going through, you know, so many infections. Right. Yeah. Yeah, mm. uh, a good yeah. point. Yeah, good, good point. Uh, yeah. Just to just to uh, uh, close up for the for now, anyway, Karen. So uh, summarize to us. So once he was diagnosed, and then he had the uh, uh, the the procedure, the uh, trans. No, he only had a okay. simple uh, a test, and he had the molecular diagnostics done. Okay. In uh, uh, Singapore, mm-hmm. um, and. Um, and that confirmed that there was a genetic mutation. That, that means there was a gene that did not produce what we call the Bruton tyrosine kinase. Mm. And hence, he could not develop uh, and or produce antibodies. Right. Yeah. But what I'd like to just quickly also um, uh, mention and highlight is because of this uh, lack of awareness as well, is and also the fact that we have been trying to uh, bring this up and to get uh, in terms of uh, more experts within the uh, government hospitals um, is that uh, we have also um, um, got this in line with the World Primary Immunity Deficiency Week, Mm -hmm. uh, the Malaysian Patient Organization for Primary Immunodeficiencies, or shortened as MIPOPI, which is linked up to the International Patient Organization patient, uh, for Primary Immunodeficiencies. Okay. So together with um, the Malaysian Society of Allergy, mm-hmm. we hope that we can create more awareness and advocate the uh, actual, uh, so the hope of patients with B- PID that are still there missing, which means we are only probably picking out only one percent mm-hmm. of PID patients currently in Malaysia. Mm-hmm. Only one percent. Right. There, there are ninety nine percent more to be found. Okay. So that's why we need to increase this awareness. And Karen obviously uh, is part of uh, my poppy, mm. and uh, we uh, invite everyone. Uh, to look at the World PI Week website, okay. uh, worldpiweek.org, and learn more about uh, all those things. And I hope that this uh, will be brought up uh, further, all the way up uh, by the Ministry of Health. Okay, well, good, great point there. Yeah? Uh, in the meantime, I hope Caleb's doing well so far. He's already 10, I understand, Karen? 
Yes, yes, he okay. is uh, perfectly well right now. Mm-hmm. You know, he receives his uh, immunoglobulin treatment therapy every three weeks. Mm-hmm. And yeah, yeah, and we, we encourage him, you know, to do normal things. And as long as he gets his treatment on time, you know, we, we, we want him to, you know, just live or lead a normal life like other kids. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, mm. g- g- good luck uh, to you and all the best to Caleb as well. Thank you very much, <laughs> Gong Yu. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us, Karen. All right. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Take care. First, uh, Karen uh, there uh, signing off uh, from the phone line. And of course, uh, just before I let you go, Dr. Amir, okay. what is your last uh, uh, message? Recap for us the crux of the matter. Of course, there is this My Poppy uh, link that, that is uh, that has been set up yeah. uh, to connect uh, organizations, like you said, right? Yeah. Uh, people, uh, relevant people in the field around the world and to create more awareness that way through a network. Yeah. Um, and uh, for Malaysians, so what, what is the, the, the last take-home message for today that you'd like to, to pass to us? Yeah, the, the take-home message basically mm-hmm. is PID or primary immunodeficiency is, is not rare. It's, it's uh, uncommon, true, but we need to be aware of it. Think PID, Think primary immunodeficiencies, test for it, diagnose, and treat accordingly. Do not miss it. Mm-hmm. We have to look out for that other 99% of patients. Okay, great stuff, right? Thank you so much, doctor. I've been speaking to uh, Dr. Amir Hamza Abdul Latif, excuse me, consultant, pediatrician, clinical immunologist, and allergist at Pantai Hospital Kuala Lumpur, as well as the president of the Malaysian Society of Allergy and Immunology talking about the need for better primary immunodeficiencies awareness in Malaysia. Right. Once again, thank you, uh, Dr. Amir. Thank you very much, Kong. Thanks uh, for having all of us here. Great stuff that you're doing and all the work. Yeah. In thank the meantime, you. stay tuned for more of Tracks Momentum. Another couple of hours more to go right here on the show. Uh, I've got Karen, uh, Sharon, excuse me. <laughs> I've been speaking to Karen. But Sharon from the newsroom is ready to bring you the uh, quick news updates at noon. Keep it locked tight right here on Tracks.